All right. Um, uh, this afternoon, we'll be talking about the uh, connection of electrolyte uh, imbalance. Um, and those electrolytes we'll be correcting today will correct, uh, I, I will teach you how to correct potassium, I will teach you how to correct sodium, both hyper and hypo for each of these two, especially. So we'll be correcting hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, and hypernatremia. Now, um, for us to be able to have a, a, a robust uh, discussion, it will, be, it will be good if uh, you can get a notebook and your pen because it will require uh, some calculations. So try and get something you will, you will use to make your calculations as we discuss, okay? So, um, yeah, it's very important that you understand how to correct uh, all of this uh, uh, derangement because like in our last lecture, when we're talking about fluid and electrolyte imbalance and the rest, we talk about the importance of, uh, of having a normal uh, uh, level of all of these electrolytes, potassium and sodium especially. Now, why are they so important? The reason is because, especially in children, uh, the way the kidney handles sodium and potassium is so unique that once there is there is uh, there, there is abnormal intake of any 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 fluid, it could alter the way the, the kidney will metabolize it. For instance, in a newborn baby, okay, yes, it, 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 let's say in uh, in older children outside the neonatal age group who are being fed with a highly concentrated breast milk formula, maybe the mother is uh, uh, the mother is not lactating well, and then they did not decide to give uh, infant formula. Now, it is very important that they constitute that infant, infant formulas appropriately, because if it is over, if it is uh, too much concentrated, it can predispose the child to some form of dehydration, but the child can have constipation, the child can also come down with hypernatremic dehydration. And if it is too, if, if it is too much diluted, the child can also come down with hyponatremia. So it is very important that all of this come into play. And then when children start pass, having diarrhea, especially after the age of, after six months of age, they start getting exposed to complementary, and maybe when, they, when hygiene is poor, these children start having diarrhea. And when they start having diarrhea, what happens? They will start losing these electrolytes. In diarrhea, the, 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 the electrolyte that, is, that suffers the most is potassium. So all of this is very important. And we in the last uh, we will talk about the reason why potassium is very important that it is normal. Because when the potassium level is low, that's hypokalemia, it can cause it can cause uh, cardiac arrest. Hypokalemia will cause cardiac arrest in systole, while hyperkalemia will cause cardiac arrest in diastole. So it's very important because of all of this. Now, sodium. Is that it's also it's also important that you know you know that sodium the, the normal level of sodium we, we're able to talk about is between 135 to 145 millimole per liter. So when it is above 145, there is hypernatremia. When it is below 135, it is hyponatremia. Why for potassium, depending on the laboratory, the value broad is broadly uh, 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 broadly ranges between uh, three to five millimole per liter. So it is very important that at every stage, every point in time we know how to calculate this thing so that when you have a patient who has hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia or hypernatremia, you know what to do. So, and that is exactly what we are going to do. So I want to believe that you now have your jotter and your pen to do all of this. So let's start with hypokalemia, hypokalemia. So now how do you correct hypokalemia? The first thing is this, what defines hypokalemia? Hypokalemia is serum potassium level that is less than Three millimol per liter. Once it is less than three millimol per liter, it require uh, it is hypokalemia. And then, uh, at what level will you begin your correction? You begin correction from once it's less than two point five. You become you begin aggressive correction. Now, for for the value between two point five to three millimol per liter, you may not you may not be so aggressive about the correction. You may just do an oral. You may you may correct it orally. How do you correct orally? We have a diet 
or the or use of drugs. So now diet, there are some diet that are rich in potassium, especially banana and fresh tomato. They are rich in, in, in sorry, they are rich in potassium. So when you give uh, the patients such, it can help them to keep the level of potassium normal. Then others um, like uh, medications. There are some medications that you can now put in their feed to help them to correct the low potassium. Now, but when the level is below 2.5, it's already becoming moderate to severe. And at that point, you have to, to correct the deficit. Now, this is where we are going to do some calculations. I hope you are already with your, uh, with your pen and paper. Please let me know if you are ready. I think you can unmute and let me know. So I think if for those yes, of you that, that are online, you can unmute now. You can unmute because we'll be, we'll be interacting because I need you to be responding to me. Okay, all right. So okay. now that we are ready, we are, okay, good that you are ready. So now we want to we want to uh, talk about the correction of this. Like if you remember in the last uh, lecture series, I talked to you about the principles of corrections. I told you that you are going to take care of deficits. You will take care of maintenance if you are correcting food deficit. You take care of deficits. You take care of maintenance, and then you take care of ongoing losses. Do you remember? Mm. So, yes. Now, now for, uh, it is the same principle when it comes to the electrolytes. We, we take care of the deficit, we take care of maintenance, and then we take care of ongoing losses. How do we take care of ongoing losses? Most, uh, the, the current ORS, the, the new WHO ORS, contains about 20 millimole per liter of ORS. 20 millimole of, of, of uh, sorry, I said ORS, 20 millimole of potassium, such that as you are replacing the food the child is losing, you are also replacing some potassium. So we take care of ongoing losses. Now, deficit and maintenance. How do you calculate deficit when it comes to hypokalemia? Now, the formula is this. Are you, write, are you writing down? We have observed and the expected. Which one is observed? Observe is the one you, you, you have sent a sample to the laboratory and they have given you a value that this is what this child has. That is the observed. But then what is the expected? The expected what is, is the normal value you expect the child to have. Is that taken? Yes. Okay. Now, the formula is expected minus observed. Put it in brackets. Then multiplied by 0 0.6 and multiply by the weight of the patient. That is the formula for calculation of deficit. Let me take it again. Expected minus observed, multiply by the weight, and multiply by 0 0.6. That is the formula for the calculation of the deficit of potassium. Has that been taken? Yes. Okay, so now let's, let's do an hypothetical case. Let's do an hypothetical patient. So for, for, for a patient who, who has uh, a serum potassium of uh, serum potassium of two millimol per liter, two millimol per liter, and then uh, the, the expected for that patient is 3.5. So I want to ask you, what is the deficit? Please hold on one minute, please. All right, so uh, what was your answer? Sorry for that interruption. What was, what was your answer? We didn't get the weight of the patient. Actually. Okay, okay. So the patient weighed 10 kg, 10 kg. That would be like nine. Nine. Okay, you got nine? Yeah. Yes. That, goes, that gets a contrary answer. Okay, so no any contrary answer. So that gives us a deficit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now for maintenance, for maintenance, maintenance is calculated as one to two millimole per liter. One to two millimole per liter. 
So let's say we are, we are, we are giving this child maintenance of two minimum per liter. What does the maintenance potassium per day come to? So you remember, said, the, you said? I don't understand. Okay, now we have calculated deficits. Now maintenance, maintenance is, uh, is calculated as one to two millimole per kilogram per day. So what is the maintenance of this child with 10 kg? Let's say we are using two millimole per, millimole per kg. It that should be like you said? Four, four, four about. Is it going to be four? We are using one, this is 1.2, I say one to two. Now we are using two millimole per liter. Sorry, uh, two millimole per kg. So, and the child is 10 kg. So it's two times 10 kg, two isn't it? 10, yes. What will it be? 20. That will be 20. So the maintenance per day for this child is 20 millimole. Is that taken? Yes. Yeah. That is taken, Abby. Yeah. Okay. So now you now ask yourself how much potassium the child needs in a day. For the deficits, what the child has lost is nine. And what the child should get on a normal day coming towards 20. Abby? So yeah. the child, child needs a total of how much? Like total of 29, Abby. Yes. Oh, yeah. Did you get it? Sorry, sir. The twenty-nine is the the potassium that a child needs in a day. Yeah. Remember, when you calculate the deficit, what you do get? Nine. Nine. When you calculate the maintenance, what you do get? Twenty. So, how much potassium are you giving the child altogether? 29. 29. Okay, okay, yes. You understand? Uh -huh. So that is the amount of potassium the child needs in a day. So if in, the, in, your, in your exam, they give you those parameters and they said, what is the deficit? Now you know how to calculate it, right? Just yes, apply, apply your formula. Okay, so somebody say I will give the, the formula for deficit and maintenance. The deficit it is expected minus observed. Whatever you get multiplied by the weight, then multiplied by 0 0.6. Is that taken? 0 0.6 is a constant for cation. Is a constant for cation, 0 0.6. So that is deficit. Then for maintenance, it is one to two minimal of sodium per kilogram per day. That is maintenance. Is it clear? Yes, sir. OK. So uh, underline, uh, underline. So and then uh, to know how the, the total potassium you give for the patient, you will now multiply it by, sorry, sorry, you will now add the deficit with the maintenance. That gives us the potassium that the child is taking a day. So the other thing that will now get you worried is how do you give the child this uh, potassium? So which I don't really think I should delve into. There are different ways you can either give the give, give to the child through IV fluid, or you give it through oral as oral or oral feed. But the most important thing is that you want to bring you want to bring the potassium level to at least three point five. Do you understand? That is your target because that is your expected. For some people, they can use expected of four millimole per, millimole per liter. So if we use four millimole per liter, will anything change our uh, will anything change our total deficit that is required? Will it change? Hey, nobody is talking. Hello, am I still audible? Yes, sir. Okay, so I said if we are to if we are to use four as our expected, what would be our deficit? So let's be fast. <clears throat> oh. 
12. Huh? 12. Okay, 12. So who has gets 12? Who, who has got 12? Yeah, it's 12. Okay, so now we know how to calculate uh, hypo, uh, we, we know how to correct hypokalemia now. So can we proceed? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, we can proceed to calculate hyper now. If it is hyper, how do you correct hyperkalemia? How do we correct hyperkalemia? So let's go to that now. So now for hyperkalemia, remember we, we talked about it also, uh, uh, also, also last week. Remember, for when the potassium level is high, what are those things you do? Very, if you remember, very straightforward. Number one, because of the effect of potassium on the, on, on, the, on the heart. So the first thing you want to do is that you want to give calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate will help to stabilize the cardiac muscle so that they don't get tired. So you, 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 you give uh, IV calcium gluconate at one meal per kg. At one meal per kg. One meal per kg. Now, uh, one meal of 10% calcium gluconate is the same thing as 100 milligram per kg. And the, 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 the normal dose of uh, calcium gluconate is 100 to 400 milligram per kg. So, and one meal is equal to 100 milligram. So it's the same thing as one to four meals per kg. Do you understand? So you give, to, sorry, to quickly stabilize the, the heart. So, and in exam, if there's number the one thing you are going to mention, the first thing to mention is that you will give calcium gluconate because before you finish giving every other thing that will make uh, the, the potassium level to drop, the heart might have stopped. So you want to quickly stabilize the heart so that it can give you ample time to, to stabilize. Now, that is one, that's number one. Number two is that you cannot give your glucose infusion with insulin. You give glucose with insulin. Insulin, insulin is given at 0 0.5 to 0 0.05 to one international unit per kg in children per kg, you give it as bolus, and then you give you give it in addition, addition to, with in addition to fifty percent uh, glucose, fifty percent glucose. Usually in children, we give fifty percent glucose in double dilution. Now, does anybody know what double dilution means? Can somebody talk about double dilution very quickly? Let me know. Oh, everybody's muted. Okay, it's like you, you want me to just continue to talk. Blah, 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 blah. So let, let me know then if you do not understand because if, I'm, if I continue to talk alone, it will make it very fast. But whether you understand is what I will not be sure of. So let me continue now. Now, uh, to, to, to give glucose in double dilution, 50% glucose in double dilution, what do you do? You give it like in one ratio two, one ratio two. For instance, if you are giving one meal, of 50% glucose, you are going to withdraw, you are going to withdraw two meals and add to it. Now, uh, uh, what do I mean by this? Okay, so I say, I say one issue two, I say one issue three, sorry, one issue three. Now, what it means is that you first give the same volume, you had one meal of uh, sterile water to the one meal of glucose, and then what you have is two meals. Now you will now take another two meals, of sterile water and add to the already two meals that you have. So what you now have is four meals, such that at the end of the day, you're going to have one meal of 50% dextrose water, and then you have three meals of uh, sterile water. So that's why it's one ratio three, one ratio three. That is how to do double dilution. You can see it doesn't sound like the name, but it means that you dilute it twice, twice. We dilute the first one and then dilute the second second time. So that is double dilution. So that is how you give the fifty percent dextrose water with insulin. Now another thing you do is you can give nebulized sabutamol. Nebulized sabutamol. What's nebulized sabutamol? Okay, I forgot to say that um, insulin helps to drive glucose. 
sorry, uh, helps to drive potassium into the cells. It removes potassium from the extracellular place, space into the intracellular space. That is what insulin does. Now you need to give glucose because another work of insulin is that it causes hypoglycemia. So you don't want the child to come down with hypoglycemia. So you give uh, glucose, glucose uh, water. Now, uh, another thing you do is say uh, you give nebulized sabutamol. What does, what does sabutamol do? Sabutamol helps to redistribute potassium into cells. It redistributes them. It shifts them from one component to another. So, and by that, by that the ECF potassium level will drop. And then you take care of the hyperkalemia. So, how do you, what is the dose of nebulized sabutamol? You give it as 0 0.15 milligram per kg. 0 0.15 milligram per kg. That is nebulized sabutamol. And then uh, the child gets that. So what other things can you do? You can also give sodium hydrogen bicarbonate. Sodium hydrogen bicarbonate. It also helps to shift uh, potassium into the cells. Sodium hydrogen bi uh, bicarbonate. Uh, 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 the dose is also one to two milli equivalent, milli equivalent per kg. That is the dose of sodium hydrogen bicarbonate. Now, what else do you do to, to bring down the potassium level? You, uh, you can give potassium exchange resin, potassium exchange resin. And a common, a common example of that one is chiesalate, chiesalate. Chiesalate is usually given as an, uh, as an, as an oral, you, you give it orally. orally. When you are giving it, you give it with, you give it with sobito because it is not sweet, but you have to give it something that is sweet. And an example of something you can give it with is uh, sobito. So that is that. Then the other things you will now do is that if the patient is on IV fluid, you will remove, you will, you, will, you will not give any IV fluid that has potassium. If the IV fluid you are giving the patient has potassium, you will stop it and give the one that does not have potassium. What other things can you do? You remember I talked about food that has potassium, like banana, tomato, uh, fresh tomato. So you will, you will remove all those food that has potassium in them, in their diet. So by the, by the time you do all of this, you would have brought down the potassium. You have corrected the hyperkalemia. And if all of this fail, and the potassium level is still above 6 millimol per liter or above 6.5 millimol per liter in neonates, you may have to do dialysis, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, uh, whichever one is appropriate for the age. So with that, we take care, we, we are done with the potassium correction. Is this clear? I need a response now. Okay, so I, I should take the silence for uh, for a yes. So let me check. Somebody send a message. Okay, so there is no any new one. So we can pro we can proceed now to uh, to collection of sodium. Okay, good. Thank you, Zoom user. Maybe maybe you can put your name so that I can address by your name and not Zoom user. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so we can proceed to collection of. Don't disturb. We can proceed to collection of uh, uh, sodium. So it's, it's important to collect sodium because of its effect on the brain. Remember, if you remember what we talked about uh, sodium the last time, uh, sodium is is the, is the major determinant is a major is a major determinant of uh, osmolality of serum or oh, sorry osmolality, osmolality of plasma i mean so because sodium is a major is a major determinant if you remember the formula for calculation of uh, osmolality you are going to remember that the formula is two sodium plus urea two sodium plus urea and then plus glucose so those three are the major determinant. There are other determinants like methanol, ethanol, and other, all those inorganic uh, acids. So, but the major determinant is sodium, urea, and then glucose. So that is why when sodium is very high, what happens? The osmolality of, this, of the plasma is so high. When the osmolality is high, what happens? Waters, uh, water will move from the area of higher concentration of water to area of lower concentration of water. Now the plasma is as a lower concentration of water. So you will now see water moving from the cell into the extracellular space, such that a patient who, is, who has hypernatremia, who has high sodium level, the patient will not appear dehydrated. Why? Because the fluid has come from the cell 
and has entered into the extracellular space. So in them, we say they have cellular dehydration. Because when you see them, they are still walking around, but they can fall down and die at any time, or they can start having, having convulsion. Why? From cellular dehydration, cellular uh, atrophy, hypoxia, because by the time all the flu are out of the cells, there will, not be no, there, there, will be, there will be failure of, 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 uh, of tissue perfusion. And then at the end of the day, the patient becomes very ill. So that is why you have to know how to, how to correct hypernatremic, hypernatremic dehydration. So it's very important. Now, what are those conditions? Apart from uh, patients who, uh, who are fed with a poorly constituted ORS, because when ORS is over, over, over uh, is too concentrated that it is not well diluted. The patient is being fed with so much sodium, so the patient can come down with uh, hypernatremia. Also, poorly concentrated uh, breast milk substitute, all those infant formula, when they are too concentrated, they can uh, give you hypernatremic. Yeah, sorry, I, have a, I had a little internet disruption. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so like I was saying, uh, hypernatremia, so those conditions are conditions that can give you hypernatremic dehydration. Now, additionally, another condition that can give you something that looks like hypernatremic dehydration is in diabetic ketoacidosis. In diabetic ketoacidosis, remember, glucose is so high, can be as high as 30 millimole per liter, and with very high uh, glucose level. So remember, glucose is also one of the, one of the major determinants of uh, plasma osmolality. So there will also be cellular dehydration. So the patient will also not appear as if they are dehydrated, but they are very, very dehydrated. So what do you do when they come? The first thing is to, to, uh, to establish that there is hypernatremia. What are those clinical features that can tell you that this patient likely have hypernatremia? Apart from the fact that they can have, uh, they, they, they can be lethargic, uh, they can be crying without making tears, uh, they can have reduced urine output. In fact, by the time you are seeing them, they might be in shock, the pulse might not be palpable, and then all. Uh, one feature that when you see, We cannot hear you, doctor. Sorry, please hold on one minute. Yeah, sorry, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, doctor. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, it is to, it's to establish that the patient is, in, is dehydrated. And I was talking about one particular feature that when you see on general examination, it will tell you that the patient is severely dehydrated. I, at least with hypernatremia is that when you check the skin, when you do when you check for skin to go, you are going to see that uh, that, that uh, the feeling the feeling of the skin will look like a doughy. It will be doughy, doughy in uh, the, uh, it, it, it will have a, a doughy a doughy feeling. What is feeling of that doughy? It's a d o u g h y d o u G H Y. I don't know how you pronounce that on your side. I may not be very good with the pronunciation, but that is how it will feel when you feel the skin. You will just see that. Uh... Okay, please, uh, just give me give me one minute, please. Give me one minute. Uh, some of this child just drank hypo and missed my attention. Just one minute, please.
so sorry about this. Uh, this so can we proceed? Where did we stop, self? Make the hydration or hypernatremic dehydration that that brings it out. The moment you see that fissure, you you can't you can stick out neck and say this likely has hypernatremia. So, and then with 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 hypernatremia, you should act immediately. So the first thing you want to do is to determine the serum sodium. And when you are determining the serum sodium, uh, then you can now calculate deficit. Remember deficits deficit and then you calculate maintenance deficit then maintenance so now there are some things about uh, about the correction of hypernatremia is a little bit complex so i just hope that you have your pen and your paper now so that you can take down this formula now when a patient has hypernatremia there is something they will call free water deficit they, they have lost some free water so the best fluid, the best fluid to use to correct hypernatremic dehydration is sterile water. Sterile water because sterile water has 100% free water. So that is what you use, sterile water. But how available is sterile water. Most time when you see sterile water, they come in small, 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 uh, small, small size of 10 mils. So imagine that you need 200 mils of sterile water or you need 500 mils of sterile water. Or you need one liter, one liter of sterile water. So it becomes difficult to get sterile water. So what test do you use? There are some other fluid that you can use, especially hypo, hypotonic fluid. So another fluid that you can use is a uh, is half normal saline in five that, that contains five percent. That is zero point five saline in five percent dextrose water. It is it's an hypotonic fluid, and it contains it contains about fifty percent free water, free water. So you can also use half of that 0.45%, like 0.225%. 0.225% contains up to 75% uh, free water. That is water that does not have any electrolytes. That is what free water is or is uh, means. So that is the type of what uh, fluid you use to correct hypernatremia. But the problem with this fluid, the hypotonic fluid also is that they are, they are associated with very higher risk of making the child to come down with hyponatremia. Just imagine you are trying to take somebody away from hyponatremia. The next thing is that the patient is now having hyponatremia. So, and then you, you, uh, you now start leaving uh, frying pan and entering into fire. So because of that, we prefer to, to use, still use normal saline. Normal saline is isotonic to plasma. Do you remember? It's an isotonic fluid. Studies have found that even with normal saline, normal saline will not increase the sodium level in this in the in the plasma. It will not. Rather, it will bring it down slowly, slowly until it comes it comes to normal. So that is it. Now, sometimes you may decide to start with a 0.45 percent saline, and then later change to normal saline. But most time in pediatrics, we still prefer to go ahead to use normal saline. Why? Because we don't want the child to go from hypernatremia to hyponatremia because we are using an, an hypotonic solution. I hope this is clear. So now, how do you calculate free water deficit? It, the simple formula is to, is to, is to, is to use four mils per kg. That gives you the deficit for free water that is lost. So you calculate by using four mils per kg. That is the To use body weight. So I'm going to give you a more accurate, a more accurate formula. And what is that formula? The formula is this. Are you listening? And please write it down. You will, you will, you will, you will get your serum plasma. Remember, I told you you are going to calculate serum, uh, serum sodium. So that value you get as your serum sodium, you divide it by 145. Your serum sodium divided by 145, then whatever you get, you will say minus one, that is serum sodium divided by 145 minus one, then you close that bracket, close the bracket. Then you multiply by 0 0.6, and then you multiply by the weight of the child. Multiply by 0 0.6, and then multiply by the weight of the child. That gives you the, the, the free water deficit that the child has lost.
free water deficit that the child has known. So whatever you get is in liter. Whatever you get is in liter. So let's take an hypothetical case. A, a child has sodium level of 170. Sodium level of 170. And then you want to calculate the free water deficit. The weight of the child is 10 kg. What is the free water deficit? So I'll be waiting for your answer. What is your free water deficit? The one zero two. One. What do you get? Go on, Lita. One point zero three. Okay, I'm coming. Let me. Why, why is my audio not coming out? 1.03. Okay, 1.03. So who has get, got, got the same answer? So I'm waiting for others. Yeah, it's same. I'm not hearing anybody's voice again. I got 1.0. You said? 1 I got 1.0345. I don't know why, why my sound is not is low now. Did, did you all get 1.03? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is it. That is it. So, and that is liter, 1.0, 1.03 liters. That is the free water deficit. So I can't really hear anybody again. Let me, let me see. Okay, please. Can somebody talk? Let me be sure I can hear everybody now. Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you. I can hear your voice now. I think maybe because of the call that came in. So now we know how to calculate free water deficit, isn't it? Yes, sir. So I'm happy that you got that. You can see the formula appear complex, but if you can just demystify it, it's just to, to divide your, your, your current sodium level divided by 145, whatever you get, minus one, then multiply by 0 0.6, then multiply by the weight of the child. Whatever you get is in liters. So that gives you your free water deficit, free water deficit. Remember, you will not ask yourself, how much of free water is in, is, in, is in normal cell line? Can somebody talk? How much of free water is in normal cell line? One hundred percent. I think there is no free water. There's no free water in normal cell line because it is isotonic. Is, because it is isotonic to its plasma, it has zero free water. So you just ask to tell, ask to tell yourself now the volume of the volume of free water you want to give is one point one one liter. Let us assume one liter. So you want to use normal saline, and since normal saline does not contain free water, you just want to it has zero free water. So you assume that the volume of normal saline you want to give as your deficit is how much now? One liter. So that is it. Now, there are some instructions regarding how much, uh, regarding the rate at which you, you correct hypernatremia. You don't correct too fast. Remember, I told you the last time I said, if you correct too fast, remember that there is cellular dehydration. The moment you now pump the child with a lot of fluid, what happens? There's, there is there will be disequilibrium such that fluid will now rush into the cells 
and then there will not be edema, cellular edema. And when there is cellular edema of, of the brain cells, there is cerebral edema. Do you understand? So once cerebral edema occurs, there will, be, there, 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 there will now be, you start seeing the patient with manifesting neurological symptoms and signs. And there is a complication we talked about last week. What did I call the name that last week? We still remember, I said, you now have a situation we call central pontine myelinosis. Abby? So because of that complication, you want to correct it slowly. Now, you don't correct more than 0 0.5 millimole per liter per hour. Zero, not more than 0 0.5 Minimum per liter per hour. This usually are MCQ questions. The rate should not be more than 0 0.5 minimum per liter per hour. Meaning that in 24 hours, the maximum correction should not be more than 12 minimum per liter. So I want to ask you, for this, for this our patient who, who serum sodium level is, uh, is, is uh, 170, and you want to bring it down to 135, Sorry, we want to bring it down to 145. What would be what would how many uh, what would be the deficit there? You subtract 170 minus 145, is it not? Yes. So when you say 170 minus 145, what do you have? 25. You have what? 25. 25. So with 25, if you are not supposed to correct more than 12 per day. So how many days will it take you to correct 25? Three. Three days. That explains it. So that one liter of free water you calculated, you will not divide it into three. You will not divide it into three. So you correct it over three days. Is that taken? Yes, sir. Yes, to two. You will correct it over three days. Is it clear? So it is your deficit that will determine. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many days you are going to correct all of that? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so for a patient who has 170 as sodium level, you will you, you do over three days. So if if the if the sodium, the sodium level you have is one 160. So after how many uh, over how many days will you correct your sodium? Two days. What is the Wait, deficit? That's, that's 160 minus 145 is what? 15 Abby. Okay. So you you correct, you correct over how many days? Two days. two days. Over two days. That's over for four hours. Do you understand? So that is how you determine how, how over how many days you will correct your sodium. Not more than 12 minimal in one day. So that gives you a guide. So now that deficit you have calculated using that formula, you will not divide it by the number of days you want to correct. And that is what you will not give daily. So that is for deficit. Then you will not calculate the maintenance for the patient. Now for this patient, what is the maintenance sodium? Sodium is sodium daily maintenance is two to three millimole per kg per day. So you will not calculate the, 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 the maintenance of sodium per day. And then you, you also give it, you make sure that the patient is getting the normal daily maintenance. So for a patient who is 10 kg, and you want to use two minimum per kg as maintenance, so what is the maintenance sodium that he needs? Uh, 20. It will need 20, 20 if you are using two minimum. So that is it. So it needs 20 minimum. Now, the question is this. How do, how do you convert your millimoles to mills? I mean, it, it, it is not millimoles you are going to add ang as, as infusion for the patient. It is food you are going to, you are going to. Uh, so how do you convert millimoles to volume? So that is also very, very important. So now how do you get that? You remember, normal cell line contains how much sodium? How much sodium does normal cell line contains?
Okay, sorry, I don't know what happened. I was logged out. So, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you will now convert your volume. If you now ask yourself, if one liter of normal saline contains one. How many meals of normal saline will contain? How many millimoles do you want to collect per day? 12. Abi? Yes, I didn't get you. Okay, remember, we, we want to convert this millimoles now to meals. Yes. Is that it? Uh -huh. So you are giving one liter. Of normal city line. That is that is clear, isn't it? Yes, sir. And that one liter of normal line you are giving it over how many days? Over three days. Because the sodium level was 170. So now you have you have calculated maintenance for sodium, and you want to give 20 millimole of, of sodium per day. Do you understand? 20 millimole of sodium per day. So convert that 20 millimole to volume. How do you do? You will ask yourself, if one liter, that is 1,000 mils of sodium contains 154 millimole of sodium, how many mils of normal saline will contain 20 millimole? Can you do the calculation and do the cross multiplying? Let's see what you get. Or should I come again? Please come again, sir. Now, we have established that one liter, one liter of normal saline contains 154 millimole of potassium, of sodium. Is that taken? Yes. Okay. So how much of normal saline now will contain 20 millimole? So if, if one liter, or one, you know, one liter is what, same thing as 1,000 mils. If 1,000 mils is equal to, just write it on your paper like that. Are you writing as I'm saying it? If, yes, if 1,000 mils of sodium chloride, that is NaCl, is equal to 154 minimal of sodium. Then next line, X, X mil, X mil, X mil will be equal to 20 millimole. X mil will be equal to 20 millimole. Find X. Remember your mathematics, cross multiply, Abby? Seven, seven, seven. As you come again? 7.7. Seven. So when you cross multiply, you will not see yourself getting 1,000 times 20, Abby? Yes, sir. Divided by 55. By Five one, five. So what you do get? Twenty nine. Yeah. Like one thirty approximately. One thirty. Okay. Let me let me do my own calculation too, so that I can I can be sure that we're on the same page. Yes. Um. So we take one thousand mils times twenty divided by one fifty four. So that's one twenty nine point eight seven. Abi. Yes, sir. Okay, beautiful. So, so that means that 130 mils of normal saline will give you 20 millimoles of sodium. So, what, what your patient gets every day, your patient gets your 1,000. Uh, uh, remember, we said that one liter that you got from your free water deficit, you divide it into three, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, so, if you divide it into three, what do you have? If you divide 1,000 by three, what do you have? You have 333 mils. Okay. So that means every day you will give, you will give deficit.
64. 63. Okay, 63. So that is the food your patient is now taking per day. Is it clear? Yes, sir. You have calculated the deficit. You divide your deficit by three days because you must not correct more than 12 per day. Then you calculate your daily maintenance and then add it to the daily deficit. And then after 72 hours, your patient should have normal serum sodium. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so we can we can do the last one now, which is hyponatremia. Abi? Yes, sir. Okay, so since we have been able to establish that of hyponatremia, uh, sorry, the hyponatremia, for hyponatremia on its own, hyponatremia is divided into, it can be mild, it can be moderate, it can be severe. Usually we don't correct until it is severe because the body will likely adjust when there is low sodium level up to the level above 120. You know, remember the normal sodium level is 135 to 135. So when it is less than 135, it is hyponatremia. But if it is more, uh, if it's more, it's 130 and above, it is mild. If it is, if it's between 120, uh, 120, uh, 120 to 129, it is moderate. But when it is less than 120, it is severe. So we don't correct sodium level unless it is less than 120. Do you understand? So now when it is less than 120, what do you do? What do you do? You have to give hypertonic, hypertonic uh, saline. And remember, I told you that there is 3% saline. 3% saline contains 513 minimal of sodium. That is one liter of 3% saline contains 513 of sodium. You can see that is huge, isn't it? Normal saline contains just 154 millimole for every liter. Why 3% saline contains 513 millimole of sodium per liter? That is a lot. So if you have a child who has hyponatremia, all you need to calculate is to calculate your, your deficit. And the deficit is expected minus observed multiplied by multiply by uh, 0 0.6, then multiply by the weight of the patient. So once you get it, that gives you the rough estimate of, of, your, of the deficit of sodium that you're going to correct. So now let's, let's say that our patient asked, uh, uh, did we correct this one in, last, in our last lecture? I think I remember. So our patient asked, okay, it wasn't your, if I was teaching, just another set of people. Now our patient asked sodium of 100. And we want to take it to, we want to take it to 120, 100. We have 100. We want to take it to 120. What is this deficit? What is the deficit? Can somebody calculate very quickly? Our patient is still 10 kg. Can you please repeat the formula? The formula is uh, expected minus observed multiplied by weight, then multiplied by 0 0.6. Okay, the answer is 120. 120. Okay, I'm just thinking, how do we get 120? Sorry, let me calculate it again, sorry. Expected minus observed. Minus, you said yes, the expected is 120, yes? Yes. Of, uh, the observed is 100. And the observed is 100. Yes. 20 times. So times six. That'll be 120. Yeah, it's 120. You got 120. Okay, uh, let me calculate my own again. So expected minus observed gives us 10, isn't it? 20. 20. Is it 20? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, yes, you got it. That is uh, 120. So what it means is that the sodium deficit that this patient has is 120 millimole. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. 120 millimole. 120 millimole. 
So now, what is the difference between this uh, bet between the sodium? It is it is ten. The difference between the expected and, my, uh, and the observed is ten, isn't it? So you want to raise the sodium by ten, and now, the, but the actual sodium deficit that the child has is a uh, one twenty millimole. So you now ask yourself, how do you get this one twenty millimole corrected? How do you replace it? So you do the same thing. If one liter of, if one liter of uh, of three percent saline gives you five hundred and thirteen millimole of sodium. Are you writing? If yes, one, if one, if one thousand mils of three percent saline is equal to five hundred and thirteen millimole of sodium, X, X will be equal to one twenty mils. Sorry, X will be equal to one twenty millimole of sodium. So what is X? So X now will be equal to what? One thousand times. 120. 120. Then divided by what? 513. So what did you get? Two three three point nine one plus yeah. nine two. Who has got three two three three point nine? Okay. There's no did you get the same answer? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay, that is fine. So that means that the amount of volume, I mean, the volume of 3% saline that you need to, to take the sodium level from 100 to 120 is 234 mils of 3% saline. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So you now give it over, over one day, over 24 hours. Remember also that you don't release it more than 12 per day. You don't raise more than 12 per day because if you are too aggressive, the child can come down with central pontine myelinosis. So remember also that you don't give it more than 0 0.5 millimole per liter per hour, such that you don't need to 24 hours before you realize that you are rushing the fluid. You can also assess it after two hours. If I give you more than this, if I give you more than this, if I, and then you can assess yourself. Not more than 0 0.5 minimum per liter per hour, not more than zero, uh, more, not more than 12 minimum per liter per day. Is that, that clear? So that is if you are giving 3% saline, isn't it? Now, without me talking, how much we how, uh, how much meals of normal saline will you give if you are to correct with normal saline? What volume of food will you give? Let me be sure that you got it. If you are using normal saline, what volume of fluid will you give? Using the same parameters. Huh? Yes. Okay. It will be seven seven nine point two two. Okay, who has got that? I got that seven seven nine point two two. All right, I feel like telling you people to clap for yourselves. Can you please clap for yourselves? So Good, that is very, very, very beautiful. And with this, we have been able to correct hyponatremia. We have been able to correct hypernatremia. We have been able to correct hypokalemia. And we have been able to correct hyperkalemia. These are the major emotions that we have in pediatrics. That when you, can, when you know how to correct, you can, really, you can really stand up and say that you are a pediatrician. So I, I hope this, we can stop at this point. And then let me know if you have any question. It's quite clear, sir. Okay, very clear, Abby. All right, yeah. I'm happy. Sir, please right, ask so, a question. Okay, Sorry. please go ahead. Out of this, um, today's topic, I just want to know if 
we are going to be having a separate class for um, blood, blood transfusion. Okay. Um, I don't really know what the plan is. You, okay, you wanted us to talk, to talk wanted us to talk about blood transfusion. Yes, in pediatrics. Yes. Okay, okay. I don't know, uh, Doctor Isaac. Do we still have time? Ah, Doctor Isaac, you don't sleep. Okay, let me let me call him on WhatsApp and see whether he will respond. Okay, um, he's not picking his call. Please, can you still hear me? Please, can you still hear yes, me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Okay. He's not picking his call. So what, what I would suggest is this, because I'm not, I don't know, it's like maybe another person may want to take a teaching uh, by two o'clock. Uh, now, there, there is a particular thing I want us to discuss, like uh, how to calculate drop rates for solo set, for giving set, for blood giving set. So maybe when we, are, when we are doing that, we can now talk more on blood, blood transfusion. So how do you see that? That's the case, sir. All right, so uh, uh, we, we can make it like that then. Then, uh, if, if, if people can come up, uh, on WhatsApp, you, you can bring it up. I can create an hour later in the night, if it's okay by you, voluntary. An hour later in the night, uh, if you give me, go ahead, so that we can just discuss this once and for all. So if it's convenient for you, but you can put it on the platform and let me know if that will, be, if that will fly. So with this, I, in the absence of any other question, we can, we can close. Right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being so participating. Thank you so much. Thank you so Bye. much for your time, sir. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for your time, sir. All right. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. I was calling you, sir. Okay, sir.